Are you struggling to design a logo that feels like you? Well, in this video, let me show you how to design a hand lettered logo that's professional, personal, and easy to design using Adobe Fresco and Adobe Illustrator. Let's jump right in. Fresco opened, let's create a new document and select the current screen size, which is the full iPad screen. First, we'll brainstorm and sketch. I prefer using the Pixel Pencil Brush. You can add your favorite brushes to the Favorites panel, making them easy to access, like my pencil brush here. For a fictional honeycomb bakery, I like to write out the logo name first before sketching any ideas. Then I'll list key business characteristics or notes I want to incorporate into the logo. When creating your logo, think about the feelings your business evokes and the characteristics you want it to represent. Take time to brainstorm and list key elements, both visual and emotional, that reflect your brand. This will help ensure your logo is authentic and true to who you are. For a honeycomb bakery, we want it to evoke cozy, home sweet home vibes. We'll incorporate honey into the design and mix a script and hand lettered style. Since our business is all about pastries with honey drizzled on top, these are the key elements to focus on. Now that we have our notes, let's start sketching ideas for the logo. I'll create a new layer and turn on the grid for light guides, adjusting the size and opacity as needed. Using the notes, I'm brainstorming ideas, maybe a script and letter design with a simple serif font underneath. For my first idea, I'll start with honeycomb and script using the uppercase H, and then I'll add bakery underneath on the bottom right. Next, I'll incorporate a bee or a honeycomb element. To do that, I'll use the Shape Builder tool to create a honeycomb with a hexagon and trace it to add the bee. You can find your Shape Builder tools on the bottom right corner of Adobe Fresco. There's different shapes that you can play around with in case you're curious. And as I'm drawing, I'll continue to experiment by adding wings and I'll also play around with the placement, brainstorming different ways to incorporate these elements into the logo. I'll consider adding lines to enhance the design, creating movement and flow, and experimenting with how these lines can complement the overall structure of the logo. Now that we have a first design, let's move on to the second one. This time I'm using lowercase letters for honeycomb. I'll start by sketching out the word, making sure that the letters flow together smoothly. Beneath it, I'll add bakery in all caps, giving it a more structured look. Now for a fun twist, I'm gonna turn the O in honeycomb into a honeycomb shape. I'll use the Shape Builder tool to create a perfect hexagon, giving it that signature honeycomb feel. This little detail adds a unique touch to the logo, making it stand out while keeping the theme consistent. Now let's move on to a third design. This time I'm using a cursive style with a capital H. I want the letters to be more bubbly, almost a retro type of style. This gives me the cozy vibe I'm aiming for. The round, soft letters really evoke that feeling of home, which is exactly what I want for the honeycomb bakery. To add some charm, I started by drawing a bee, but then I decided to switch it up and go for a pot of honey instead. I decided to use the symmetry tool and fresco to draw my pot of honey. It'll make sure that my little pot of honey is perfectly symmetrical. So I wanted to make something very simple, something that didn't take away from the main text of honeycomb. I don't want to draw too much attention, so I'm trying to keep it simple. Again, I feel like it might be a bit too big, but it's fun just to kind of brainstorm and figure out what I like. And finally, adding bakery beneath. Now I'm back to brainstorming and sketching another idea. I'm keeping it simple for this fourth design, just uppercase text with a small detail on top. I decided to add a little miniature bee using the symmetry tool above the main text, just to add a more detail to make it stand out. And then I'm thinking about maybe adding some elements on the side. I zoomed out to assess, and once I considered the overall design, I decided to add a whisk on either side of the bee, which brings in that bakery element while also tying in honey. After reviewing all the designs, I decided to go with this design, the cursive bold lettering. I wasn't as fond of the honey pot anymore, so I removed it and decided to add a whisk with honey dripping off of it. It's simple, cute, and blends the honey and bakery elements perfectly. So I'm happy with this design overall. I'm gonna go ahead and select this design. I'm gonna close my lasso, go to my layers panel, click on the three dots and select duplicate selection. Then I'm gonna select my other layers around the honeycomb text and just hide them for the meantime. And I'll select my main design here, make it large enough on my canvas. I'll reduce the opacity. And now I wanna add some guides. So on a new layer, I will grab a regular just 
pencil brush with the color blue and using my ruler I'm gonna go ahead and add some horizontal guides so that my letters are all about the same height. Guides help keep elements aligned making the logo look professional and cohesive. So now on a new layer I'm carefully tracing the design with the pencil brush smoothing the lines as I go to make it crisp and clean. So this is no longer my sketching phase this is what I considered my final logo. I want it to look very polished. Even though I'm using a pencil brush I still want the design to have that handwritten feel. It's not going to be perfect and that's exactly what I'm aiming for. I want it to feel personal like I created it myself. This touch gives the logo the homey authentic vibe that I'm looking for. Once I fill everything in I add the whisk on top using the symmetry tool and then after adjusting the symmetry angle I switch to a basic round brush for my favorites panel and start drawing the whisk refining the details as I go. I really recommend utilizing the symmetry tool. It is a pretty new feature for Adobe Fresco. It's amazing to just create some beautiful symmetrical designs. It can be a very simple thing like a whisk. Once this is ready we're going to click on share and we're going to click on share a copy to illustrator on the desktop and it's gonna send it to my desktop in a snap. Now that Fresco has sent the file, we'll go ahead and click Convert Layers to Objects and then click OK. You can see our design is right here on the desktop. Adobe makes it so easy and seamless to work across apps. If I check my layers, all of the layers from Fresco have been preserved, which is amazing. The next step is to vectorize this design. Vectorizing is important because if you want to scale your logo, for example, making it large for a storefront or small for napkins or cups, it needs to retain its quality. To do this, we'll use the image trace tool. First, we'll select our object and then we'll click on image trace and select silhouette. In a few seconds, you'll see our sketch has been traced as an image now. And I'll repeat the process for whisk and the honey images. I'll continue selecting image trace, clicking on silhouette, and tracing those elements as well. Now that everything is traced, we'll select each element starting with the honeycomb text and click on expand. And do the same for the whisk and the honey. After expanding all elements, we now have anchor points. This means our design is officially a vector image and no longer a flat image. With these anchor points, I can make adjustments. For example, I can fix this portion of the end by deleting some anchor points by using the minus key on my keyboard. I'll continue to do the same for the C because there's a bit of a rugged patch here. So again, using the minus key on my keyboard to delete some of these anchor points. And I can also tweak the M, bringing it up slightly. These adjustments keep the handwritten feel intact as the little imperfections give the logo the authentic and personal touch that I really want. Now that the main logo is ready, let's add the bakery text. I'll go ahead and grab the type tool and place the text at the bottom right corner, setting the size to around 60 points. I'll use a basic sans serif font that's clean and simple, ensuring it doesn't distract from the main logo. To refine it, I'll address the tracking in the character panel to about a thousand for a bit more spacing. Once it's set, I'll expand the text by going to object, selecting expand, ensuring object and fill are checked and clicking OK. Now the text has anchor points too, which is perfect. And there it is, our honeycomb logo. Let's see how it looks on different products to bring it all together. And that's how you design a custom hand lettered logo using Adobe Fresco and Adobe Illustrator. Whether you're creating a logo for a bakery or a small business, the process is still the same. Get creative, but most importantly, have fun with it. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a like and subscribe. And let me know in the comments what logos you're working on. See you in the next video.